Hello, I'm Melissa Conley Tyler, the National Director of the Australian Institute of International Affairs, and we're interviewing here Greg Barton, Professor Greg Barton from the Alfred Deakin Institute at Deakin University at the IPSA World Congress, a large event that's brought a couple of thousand uh, political scientists from around the world to Brisbane. How are you holding up? Yeah, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> so two and a half thousand political scientists and, and the world problem is still not solved. Well, we're, we're working on them and I, I know you were speaking uh, yesterday on um, assessing the threat of nativism and populism to the Muslim world's most promising democracy. So I just want to ask you a bit about that. Why do you think Indonesia is the Muslim world's most promising democracy? Well, it's certainly the Muslim world, if you're talking about 50 uh, Muslim majority nations, it's, it's the largest Muslim majority nation. And when you think of Muslim majority nations, those 50 nations uh, on democracy and good governance, it's a fairly short list of those that have democracy and good governance. I mean, to be fair, the uh, Middle East monarchies have a degree of good governance but not democracy. Mm. But Indonesia, and thankfully just recently Malaysia, mm. uh, are now uh, on the path of democracy. Mm. Uh, Tunisia is still holding firm. Mm. Uh, going beyond that, Pakistan, Bangladesh, uh, uh, you know, they're, they're certainly democratic in their processes. Uh, mm. Pakistan's got an election coming up, so we'll see how well that mm -hmm. goes. But they're facing much bigger problems than Indonesia. Mm. So Indonesia's had two decades now of consolidating democracy. It's imperfect, people are impatient, the legislature is very disappointing, the political parties lack real ideological conviction, with one or two exceptions. Uh, but there's been good presidents and mm. some good leaders mixed bag with members of parliament. Uh, but two steps forward, one step backwards, it's a very familiar Indonesian story, but it's mm, still holding right. true. And so what are some of the threats you see at the moment? Well, they come from several directions. One is, of course, uh, next April, uh, there will be elections simultaneously for the parliament and, mm. and for the president. At this stage, uh, it looks like there'd only be two people who could uh, pull off the presidency. Mm -hmm. So the incumbent, Joko Widodo, mm -hmm. uh, Jokowi, mm -hmm. and the, the guy who ran against him last time in 2014, mm -hmm. Prabowo Suryanto. Okay. Now, Prabowo is way out in front of all the rest mm -hmm. of the would-be rivals, but he, he lags a long way behind Jokowi. Mm -hmm. Having said that, in 2014, he had a big gap and he almost closed that gap mm -hmm. and almost won. It was only the last week or two that that mm -hmm. was turned around. So he's a possibility. The reason why uh, you could describe him as being a populist threat is mm -hmm. he doesn't appear to be a Democrat. There's no clear uh, commitment to democracy. He seems rather authoritarian mm -hmm. and illiberal. Given his uh, background. Yeah, he, of course, famously played a role in uh, the very disappointing governorial elections in 2016 in mm -hmm. Jakarta uh, that used a mass mobilization of, of radical Islamist elements in a way that was really quite nasty because the incumbent was charged falsely with, with blasphemy. The fact that he was Chinese, Christian, outspoken, made himself a big target, uh, mm. didn't take away the, the tragic nature of that going against all the achievements in Indonesian democracy. So if that comes into play in this presidential election and in the parliamentary elections, uh, that represents a threat to democracy. Mm. On the other hand, uh, Joko Widodo, like any political leader, is not perfect himself. He's spoken recently about uh, asking the police to take a leaf out of Duterte's book mm. and to shoot criminals if they're giving trouble. And uh, there's no reason to believe that Jokowi in, in general is illiberal, uh, but that sort of talk is dangerous. It's mm. not a good thing. And of course, uh, it's in a context to which Indonesian journalists have been fa faced increasing pressure, threats of litigation, uh, a, a elite power brokers basically trying to block them getting the news out, uh, threats to mm -hmm. um, the institutions that have uh, so far uh, served democracy so well in Indonesia, mm. uh, particularly the Anti-Corruption Commission. Mm. And so it's from an Indonesian point of view up, up close, there's a lot of grounds for concern. Mm. From a, a more distant point of view, looking in the global context, I'm still moderately optimistic, mm. but it has to be tempered with realism and the, t and the, and the threat of, of both populism and of illiberal corrosive um, mm. A death by a thousand blows but, uh, still remain. It's a real one. Mm. Uh, looking out this far ahead, are you prepared to make a, a, a pick for the election? The trends have been pretty clear, okay. so that's uh, that's promising. I mean, Jokowi is, mm. uh, was very popular in 2014. As I said, uh, Prabowo closed mm. the gap very nearly. Uh, Jokowi hadn't, cam uh, hadn't campaigned very well. He came good in the last fortnight and, and pulled ahead again. And then his popularity dropped. Uh, people had mm. really, I think, uh, artificially high expectations, but he steadily rebuilt that popularity. Mm. The one thing that threatens him at the moment is uh, if, if, if the Chinese economy falls over, then we're mm. all in trouble. 
Indonesian economy will be in trouble. Mm. And if that should happen, uh, then it would be a serious reversal for him, very likely. That, that's when that, that sort of moment could be an opportunity for Prabowo. Short of that, it, it looks like uh, it's, well, certainly his Joko is to he's lose, in a strong and he's, he's very likely to win. And Prabowo hasn't even announced that he's running yet, mm. even though uh, time is rapidly running out. Mm. And that suggests that the polling is, is just very discouraging for him. Mm. He may have overcooked things in 2016. Mm. That uh, mobilisation of Islamist uh, crowds um, left a bad taste in many people's mouth, and it may have actually worked against him. Mm. Okay. Well, look, thank you very much. We'll all be watching with interest. Um, as you say, it's, it's something that affects us deeply here in Australia. So we'll be having more interviews from the IPSA World Congress over the next few days. Please have a look at internationalaffairs.org.au.